Welcome to Redefining Medicine, an intimate and personalized program that illustrates a different side of the practice of medicine. Our in-depth conversations will focus on mentors and motivators who are consistently reshaping, redefining, and rediscovering the field of medical health care. I would like to welcome Dr. Martin Bloom, a practicing cardiologist for over 40 years. Dr. Bloom became frustrated with the lack of holistic and preventative treatment options available in traditional medicine. As a result, Dr. Bloom co-founded the BioStation with the mission of redefining healthcare in the hope to prevent illness, not just treat illness, by providing numerous services rooted in anti-aging, functional, and integrative medicine. Thank you so much, Dr. Bloom, for joining us today and for your time. My pleasure. So let's get you back to your younger years, and whether it was when you were in elementary school or, or sometime in high school, what initially sparked your interest in going into medicine? Well, that's an interesting statement because I didn't want to be a doctor. I actually started in high school to become an accountant. And then I went to college and I lost interest in that. And uh, I did a year of pharmacy school. And uh, after working in a pharmacy, I decided that was not for me. And then I continued uh, doing chemistry. So when I finally graduated from, uh, from college, I actually had a BS in chemistry and I had a second degree in education. And I taught school for a while. Um, and somehow in that space, I decided that I'd like to go to medical school, which is what I did. I always had an interest in helping people. Uh, that's why I taught school. But um, teaching school, I found there were too many rules and regulations to allow you to help people. Oh, and medicine wasn't any different. Well, at the time, medicine was different. At the time... A doctor had his own practice and ran his own practice. Without the bureaucracy. Without the bureaucracy. And so I thought, well, that would be a great way to help people. And then as I got into it, I became more and more passionate about it. So by the end of medical school, I was gung-ho, ready to roll. And you spent 40 years as a cardiologist, from what I understand? Well, for certain 36 years, because I spent 36 years practicing medicine in Boca Raton. And I had a few years before that, so it's close to 40 years. And what led you on the trajectory that you are on now and practicing integrative? And well, um, you know, I had a lot of my patients that I opened up in 1972. I opened up my practice here. No, excuse me, 1978. I opened up my practice in Boca. And I kept a lot of those patients almost to the end. So they went from the age of 65 to 75 to 85, and I watched them deteriorate. And most of them I was dealing with had three to five diseases and were on five to 10 medications. And I felt like I was doing bubble gum and rubber bands. You know, they would come in and I would sort of plug this up, patch that over, send them out. And a couple months later, they'd come back, and I'd rearrange the patches. But I never really did what I would like to do, and that's to make them really better, besides giving them, well, here, take this medicine and take that medicine. And that's really what you do. You know, patient comes in, you have a complaint, take this medicine. And unfortunately, we've actually raised a generation of people who, after you tell them, like, look, you need to lose weight, you need to change your diet, you need to exercise. And then they look at you and they say, well, why don't you just give me the pill? And they're happy with the pill. So I sort of got the lulled into this is not such a great thing, not really doing what I wanted to do. And I started to implement other methodology into the practice and give people supplements and give people minerals. And, and then I sort of got interested in that. How did your patients respond to that? Um, oh, they didn't mind. It was to them. It was just one more pill, you know, to take. So uh, they they liked that I was thinking out of the box. Um, but again, you're talking about people 
most days in my cardiology practice, there was no one under the age of 75. And they weren't going to stop going to the twofers and the 4 p.m.s. They just weren't going to do that. And they weren't going to get up at 6 in the morning and start to jog. They just weren't going to do that. And uh, I, unfortunately, that was one of the sad points of, of the cardiology practice was that I can count on this hand the number of people in 36 years that actually did that. So even the people who had open heart surgery, who had all that discomfort, and they came out like they were walking on eggshells, within a year they were back to twofers and not exercising and gaining weight. Do you recall this specific event or moment where you said, okay, I'm, I'm changing something or I'm out? Well, that's an interesting thing also because I can, I can tell you the exact moment. But I, I will tell you that I looked into A4M five years before I ever joined A4M because I contemplated doing this five years ago, but there wasn't any impetus. There wasn't that push and I was busy and, and I thought, you know, going to study all that stuff all over again, I don't want to do it. So I didn't do it. And then one day, my son Ross called me up and he said, Dad, I'd like to come over this evening and talk to you. So I said, fine. And what does that usually mean? Well, I don't know how money. old your <laughs> children are, but it usually means I need money or I have a problem. That's what it usually means. Uh, and this time he comes in and he says, you know, Dad, I'd like to open up a new concept. And I think he was floored because he said to me, we're looking for a medical director and we'd like you to be the medical director. So uh, I really asked him uh, very few questions. But one of the questions I asked him was, if I do this, you two are businessmen. I, I dealt with businessmen, and they think about profits. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's what you do if you're a businessman. I said, but if I do this with you, I have to know that medicine always trumps business. And if you're willing to do that, I'm in. And they said, yes. So I was in, and they, of course, said, well, now, where do we go from here? And I said, I know exactly where to go from here. So I pulled up A4M on the computer, found out that in another two or three weeks, they were having one of their major conventions in Orlando. And I said, well, you go up and I'll go up. I'm going to take one of their modules, find out what it's all about. And you go schmai around and find out what you can find out. And we did. And that was the creation of the biostation. Did you immediately either leave your practice, your cardiology practice, or start to do this on the side? Or what was the well, um, timing of that? I, I, I planned to wean out of the cardiology practice. Um, and what I did was I practiced cardiology, but in the weekends, I flew all over the country. And I took module after module after module all over the place from from as far north as Boston, as far west as, uh, as L.A. and San Francisco, and parts in between. Um, so finally, I completed all the recommendations or the requirements. For the fellowship. For the fellowship. And uh, I sat for the fellowship. A oral, uh, well, first the written exam and then the oral exam and passed, and here we are. So what was it like to be a student again? It was not fun. <laughs> um, it was really, uh, it was really very difficult. You know, when I was young, I used to sit in class all day long, eight hours a day and no problems. I did that five days a week and for, in medical school for the first two years. But sitting in that lecture, first of all, they started to talk about things that I thought, oh God. The Krebs cycle, I thought I got rid of that already. I really hated that. Every student hates that. It's the, the, the one thing you memorize and within 30 minutes after the exam is finished, you have no idea what it is. Or uh, the uh, hormone panel up there. You know, Those are things that, yeah, I remember studying them years and years ago. 
but not, you know, I didn't think I'd ever have to do that again. It was very difficult to sit for the module. The modules are grueling. You know, their goal is to throw as much information in three days as they could possibly do, and they do. So it's 7.30 in the morning till 5.30 at night or 6 o'clock at night, three days in a row. It's a lot of material. Did you find yourself far more accepting of what you were being taught because you had spent all of these years as a physician and probably not even implementing into your practice the things that you were taught in medical school because you don't do that? Well, that's an interesting concept because in medical school uh, and in training and in practice, what you're taught is none of that is worth looking at. I mean, um, for example, I... In, I presently use WP thyroid, which is a natural product. Um, I never heard of that because in medical school there was only Synthroid. And in internship, residency, and fellowship, there was only Synthroid. And if I would have said to my professor, well, what do you think about Armour Thyroid? Ah! And because that was brought up once, he goes, ah, it's junk, can't use that. Now I see the benefits of it, um, and I listened to the lectures, and I looked up some of the references, and so now I use WP Thyroid. I will use Synthroid. I'm not completely holistic. I would call myself integrative. I'll use whichever works best. If it's made by a pharmaceutical company, so what? If it's made by a supplement company, so what? If it's made by a compounding pharmacy, if it works, that's what I use. So how many years now have you been practicing this type of medicine? I think it's going on four years. And who is your typical patient now? Well, now, as I told you, my typical patient was older than 75. Now I would say my average patient is about 44, between 42 and 44. My oldest patient is 93. And it's a far different practice. Because everyone that comes in here is looking to do better. Most of them, um, I, I get some people in who come in because I'm overweight. I get some people in who came in because my wife said I have to come <laughs> in. Uh, but the majority of them are people who are already in a gym, they're already watching their diets. And some of them are as well-read as I am because they, they go through everything. So it's a whole different population. It's a population that's here to, to teach me something that's going to make me better. And in that group of people, I'm not doing bubble gum and rubber bands. I'm actually trying to do preventive medicine because I believe that preventive medicine is what's necessary to actually have a, a better life, a more productive life, and a longer life. And your quality of life is good, because quality of life is really the essence of what it's all about. It doesn't matter to live to be 100 if you're miserable for the last 25 years. But if you can live to be 100 and be, well, on your own, you know, not 30 years old, but, you know, that's great. So how did you initially implement, or what therapies did you initially implement into your practice when you started? Um, well, we try to implement all of them. In other words, when, when we evaluate a patient, when I evaluate a patient, okay, I do a standard history that I've been doing for 40 years. I do a physical exam, um, essentially what I've been doing. And then we do lab data. And I always did a lot of lab data because I was into looking at cholesterol numbers and subparticles of cholesterol. So I was always doing that. Now I do even more of it. But we look at your kidney function, your liver function, your thyroid function, your adrenal function, your pituitary function, as well as, depending on the sex, your ov ovarian functions or your testicular functions. So we, we look at all of it and we actually address all of those problems. 
Um, there is, uh, actually, she was in charge of the residency program or the fellowship program at A4M, Pam Smith. And she said something once, which I quote all the time, and I do give her credit for it, that I thought was great. And she said, hormones are like a symphony. In a symphony, you have the strings, you know, you have the percussion, you have the reed instruments. If any one of those doesn't play correctly, the symphony is kaput, it's terrible. So all of them have to play correctly in order to make the symphony as beautiful as it should be. And I, I always remembered that because I thought that was really great, really the insight of it all. Unless you do, you can't just do, you know, testosterone. Like, oh, everybody comes in and goes out with testosterone. Or you can't just do thyroid. Everybody comes in, gets thyroid, and goes out with thyroid. You have to put it all together. and You have to make it blend correctly. And then they run together because they're interdependent in each other. So when you first opened the bio station... Did you automatically implement all of these various therapies into your practice, or did you put in make well, baby steps? No, I think we did everything. We did everything to be in with. Now, I think I do more of everything now because with time I've learned more. So, um, so we implemented everything, but I would say that it's a better blend now than it was four years ago. And hopefully, if you, we do this again, I'll say to you it's a better blend now than it was four years ago. So how would you say your personal life has been impacted from the transition you made from cardiologist into well, what you're doing today? It's an interesting question. I'm trying to think of what my wife would say now because she says, well, now you belong to the bio station. Everything's the bio station. Um, but I would tell you that I never realized how demanding my practice of cardiology was. And the reason I never realized it was because I never did anything else. But when you call up a cardiologist and you say, I'm having chest pain, he can't say to you, well, I'm really fully booked, but I got a spot in two weeks. Can't do that. Um, and when people call you up at night, you have to address the problem. So it was a very stressful, very demanding. Um, and if you would ask any of my children, um, they're somewhat resentful because I wasn't always at school things when I should have been. I certainly wasn't at after school events when I should have been because I was busy doing cardiology and cardiology is a very unforgiving mistress. Um, so I worked, I made rounds seven days a week. Even when I wasn't on call, I used to go in and check on my patients. And between the weekends on and the night calls, it really took a lot. Now I'm, I'm busy. I work, I come in here at 9 in the morning, 9.30. And I don't usually get home until 7.30 at night. But when I get home, there's no night calls. Rarely does anybody ever call me. On the weekend, I mean, I think in the last four years, I might have had four phone calls about something that I had to address. But even that was just addressing it. And I have all my holidays off. That's I've never had that. So what do you do with all your free time now? <laughs> uh, I drive my wife crazy. <laughs> I'm sure you were doing that before, too. Um, do you have any hobbies? Hobbies? Well, yeah, I actually um, am somewhat observant in my religion, so I spend a lot of time doing that, um, and I spend a lot of time studying. I um, also go to the gym. I uh, try to practice what I preach. Um go to the gym three days a week and I have a trainer two days a week and she's very good at beating me up. And uh, then I have my grandchildren. You know, and I like to spend a lot of time with my grandchildren if I can. 
So it's interesting. I'm assuming you spend far more time with your patients today than you had been able to do in your cardiology practice. So it seems like the relationships that you establish with people are very important to you. So it must give you great satisfaction and gratification today to be able to have that time to get to know your patients better. One of the specialties that I looked at long ago was the ER. I like the ER. It's a lot of stress. I love adrenaline. That's why you become a cardiologist. Um, and I didn't become a surgeon because I'm left-handed. But um, the problem in the ER was there was no relationship. You had a 20-minute relationship with someone, and when that was done, they left. And that was it. Um, until you saw them back in the ER again. Until you see them back in the ER. But, but usually, shift-wise, not, that's not much chance of that. But um, when you practice cardiology, there's a lot of one-on-one, and you see the patients a lot. In this practice, um, the shortest visit is 45 minutes. And I give some people need two hours, so I'll spend two hours with them. But usually a new patient is an hour and a half. And we really get to talk about what we found and what we're going to do and what I would like to do and um, and answer all their questions because it's a lot of material when you sit with me for an hour and a half uh, you're you you know if you did that you would be overwhelmed with what the results are and and I do understand that and I answer all the questions a lot of people say well the I'm going to have to digest some of this before that you're that's, putting that's your fine. teacher hat on but time. what we also do which I, is unique I think to our practice is I create something called the bio ID and the bio ID is um, is a synopsis. You know, I have a treatment sheet that while we're talking, I make marks on so that when I dictate, I'll remember what we what we talked about and be clear on it. So, I create this bio ID which goes into each of the supplements or the mineral or the hormone or the vitamin that we talked about and why I talked about it. And it's written in English. So anyone can understand it. And we break it down into various phases. You know, what's for your sexual health, what's for your thyroid health, which is for your adrenal health. And uh, so you, I, I think after you read the bio ID, you have a pretty good understanding. So have you faced any um, criticism from colleagues in the community from getting out of traditional medicine? Oh, yeah. You? Yeah, a lot of them think I'm crazy. So I mean, how I, do you I, I will tell you there's, a, uh, there's an endocrinologist. That, it was the last weekend that I covered my cardiology practice. And when I worked the weekend, I covered five different cardiologists plus myself. And there I was in the ICU seeing patients. And he couldn't wait to run over to me and tell me, well, you know testosterone doesn't work. So I said, what makes you say that? And he says, well, the College of Endocrinology did three studies and proved that it didn't work. So I said, yeah. What they did was they took people who were hypogonadal, meaning their testosterone levels were below 260. And they raised them up to three to 400. And they didn't they didn't improve. And I said, well, that's fine. He said, but you missed an arm of the study. The arm of the study would have been to take them and put them between 600 and 1,000 or 600 and 800, and then you would have seen a vast difference. But you never did it. You designed the study to fail, and it failed. So, yes, I get a lot of criticism. How did he respond to that? He just looked at me. <laughs> And, and what uh, about the fellow cardiologists that you covered for? Well, um, m most of them congratulate me because they said, boy, you got out in good time because it's actually worse than it was. Practicing medicine is worse than it was four years ago. Um, so most of them aren't, at least to me, critical. There are a couple who are. You know, that, I don't believe in that stuff. You shouldn't take that stuff. But I show them articles that, you know, because most of that is just their belief. You know? They haven't sought out the information. Yes. So what was it like for you to give up um, an insurance-based practice to be a fee-for-service practice? It was wonderful. 
it was the best thing that ever happened to me. I mean, uh, it, 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 it was, when I was practicing, it was becoming oppressive. I mean, I, I had to hire people just to fill out papers. Um, Were you and, scared at all? Scared To make at that all? transition? No. No, I just went straight ahead. So what advice would you give to people considering, other physicians who are considering making a change or who are just finishing or just beginning a fellowship? Oh, I would tell them that they need to, you know, just go ahead and do what they, where their heart takes them. And, um, and in the end, they'll be rewarded. It's very hard to give up something that you know for something that you don't know. You know, the, the devil you have is better than the devil you don't know. But um, I, I would, oh, I should have done it five years earlier when I initially wanted to and get out of that. Would you say that that's um, a regret that you have? That I didn't get into it? Yeah, it is. I, I'd be much further along now if I had started five years ago. Or five years prior five years to? Five years prior, right. So how did you initially come? You had said earlier that you had uh, heard of A4M four years prior to you actually going to attend a conference. How did you first learn of them? I searched it out on the, on the web. So what, what, do you remember the day that you went online and you were looking for something? What was it you were searching for? I was searching for more information. About? About? Alternative therapy? Alternative therapy. Okay. And I came across them, and I think they're really the cornerstone of alternative medicine. Was it a particular patient that you had frustrations about that were, wasn't getting better? Was it something within yourself? Was it just well, I think it was my own desire to, to look into that, to find more information about it. Because I, I just didn't think we were making great grounds. I mean, uh, you know, today they want to put statins in the water system. And it has a place. I'm not saying it doesn't have a place, but it doesn't have the place that it's in. Um, and who knows, actually, it may not be the cholesterol lowering. It may just be the anti-inflammatory process of, of statins that actually work. Because now, you know, we spent 60 years talking about cholesterol. We've changed the entire diet, not just in the United States, but really in the world. I mean, you can actually go to London now, walk into a store, and buy something other than butter. So, and that's the result of all these, the change in, the, in our diet. But what did we get for that? We got a generation of obese people because of all the other things they put in to make it taste good. And we have an epidemic of diabetes. And, and the epidemic of diabetes really has its roots in the low cholesterol diet. Prior to you seeking out um, more information and seeking another way, was there ever a time that you wanted to give up practicing medicine? No. No, I, I love medicine. I mean, I, I wouldn't encourage my kids to do it because of the time commitment, but I made the time commitment, and I love doing medicine. It's what I really enjoy most in life. So you mentioned your son, Ross. Um, so do you give him credit for getting you out of that crazy rat race in that time? Uh, actually, yes. Yeah, I do. Um, because it was just the little nudge that I needed to go all the way. Do you think you would have gotten there anyway? I don't know. He didn't present you with I, this opportunity? I, I really don't know. I Because... Um, the one great thing about the way we do things here is down the hall, there's a business office. They do whatever it is that makes money. There's nothing wrong with making money. That's a good thing. But I don't know anything about it. Um, I don't have to hire. I don't have to fire. I don't have, I do have to write some rules and regulations because I am the director of the medical practice. Um, but I don't have to, I, I don't go to the bank. I, I just don't do any of that. That That is down the hall, and this is the medical practice. And that's all I do. In fact, when people say to me, well, how much is all that going to cost? I tell them, I don't know. And they look at me like, what do you mean you don't know? I say, I don't know. I don't know the price of any one of these things. And I do that on purpose. And the reason for that is because 
I, I don't want to look at you and say, well, I could give this or that, and I make more money giving this, so why don't I give this? So I don't, I don't really know. I just go through the medical thing, put it down, and somebody else deals with that. But like I tell them, you know, if the patient advocate calls, they're more than happy to talk about money. <laughs> they have no qualm. So what do you love most about what you're doing now? Trying to help people, and I think I am. Um, I had a woman that came in, um, menopausal. And she told me she had been to four doctors and she wasn't being helped. So we worked with her and it, and it was hard. It took a long time. And she was in for an annual exam maybe four months ago. And she said to me, she said, you know, I really want to thank you. She says, I didn't realize what a dark place I was in. She says, I was in a really dark place. But I never realized it because I was always in that dark place. But now, since you brought me into the light, and I hate to use that kind of you know, metaphor, but now that you brought me into the light, I can see what a dark place I was in, and thank God I'm out of that. And that really is what you go to work for. What does that make you feel like in comparison to the Band-Aid medicine that you were practicing? Well, that, that makes me feel like I'm really helping somebody and really preventing them, and she's really working to get better. Now, it's not that the cardiology didn't have its, its benefits. You know, when someone has a heart attack and they go into a cardiac arrest and you resuscitate them, that's a good feeling. But that comes along whenever, but this is, you know, this kind of patient I see a lot of. So are you seeing more patients um, preventatively? So they're, they're not having a specific issue, they just don't want to have a specific issue? Well, I see a lot of patients who present here for wellness evaluation. Mm -hmm. You know, they, their friends have been here or somebody told them about it or their trainer suggested they come in. And so we do a wellness evaluation and we plot out a course for them. So what is your hope for the bio station mm -hmm. in the next five or 10 years? I hope uh, five or ten years. I don't know if I can think down ten years being my age now. That that would be good. But um, no, I just hope that it grows and uh, that it continues with the same concepts that it does, that it has now. What would you say, other than yourself, of course, what would you say differentiates you from somebody else that is practicing a similar type of medicine? I think um, the whole philosophy of the biostation. Um, not just mine, but Ross's and Keith's and everybody that works here is a uh, is we want to make the place beautiful, comfortable, and tranquil. And I think that's what people find when they come here. You know, there's there's none of the rush, rush, moving around. There's each person is treated as their individual, and I, I think that's the that is a winning ph philosophy. I think that's what people are, are looking for. You know, they're not looking for the turnstile medicine. They're looking to be able to to come in here, and they do. They come in here. Um, yes, I do the medical part of this, but we do other things. We do IV nutrients. Uh, we do vitamins. We do aesthetics. We do things for female health and things for male health. Um, all of which go on here all day long, and everyone treats everyone else in that kind of fashion so that they f all feel comfortable coming in. You said earlier you, you practice what you preach. So w other than your working out and your Mediterranean diet and whatnot, what other things, services that you offer in the practice do you personally Oh, well, now you're really getting personal now. What do you want me to tell you here? Do you want me to tell you that I take hormones? I want just whatever well, you feel comfortable is, with. Yes, <laughs> well, whatever I feel comfortable with. Yes. yes, I do take hormone therapy. You look great for 96. I, I do, <laughs> don't I? I just wanted you to know that. But, um, you know, you, when you talk to men my age, they say, oh, I don't have any problem. You know, but 
most of the time that's not true. That's just what they say. Um, but clearly, I did not have the energy that I had. Um, I didn't sleep as well. Um, I uh, my I had a belly fat. That that no matter how much I exercised, I couldn't get away from. I used to bike ride 200 miles a week, and I still couldn't get rid of the paunch in my belly. Um, did you get rid of the bike? <laughs> I did. Um, I got rid of the bike because biking is so dangerous on the streets now. But um, when I took testosterone and I raised my levels up to the optimal ranges, um, I felt completely different. I had a lot more energy. The fatigue was gone. Um, there was a little bit of brain fog that I refer to, where it's not that you're demented, but you're not as focused as you used to be. And that helped me focus. Um, and it did help me in other departments as well. We can leave it at that. Yes. <laughs> um, so, Dr. Bloom, where do you hope and or what is your opinion as to where medicine will be in the next 10 or 15 years? Well, I think the key to most diseases... It's really going to be stem cells, which I, in my thought process, stem cells are God's clay. It's what he molds us from. And the other thing is genetics. I think when we finally conquer genetics, and hopefully we won't conquer it so that you can have a blue-eyed child, but we will be able to conquer most of the diseases that really we have no treatments for. Most of the genetic disorders that we spend money, pour money into a cure, is unfortunately a waste because the problem isn't with the disease. The problem is with the genes. If you can change the genes and get rid of that, and we're, we're just at that point, and we're starting to do that, then we can get rid of those diseases. Well, thank you so much for your time. It was my pleasure. Thank you.